This video is sponsored by PixelEmpire.com. Hit the link in the description to get shopping and use coupon code CANTINA for 10% off your next order. The Elder Scrolls Oblivion is an amazing game, filled with countless hours of content. And due to these countless hours, I myself lost many countless hours of my childhood playing this game. Yeah, not that I'm complaining, because what was the alternative? Go outside? Yeah, right. Like, I'm gonna do something as stupid as that. And even though Oblivion isn't my most favorite game of all time, it's pretty darn close. Certainly a lot closer than that silly game Skyrim. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, Skyrim's a fantastic game as well. It's just not as good as good old Oblivion. And you can accuse me of wearing nostalgic goggles if you'd like, but I can tell you right now that I'm not. I don't even have goggles. Nonetheless, ones that say nostalgia on them. So checkmate, haters. However, if you still don't believe me, then why don't we take a look back at this little gem, and I will prove to you once and for all why The Elder Scrolls IV or Oblivion is the greatest game that Bethesda ever made. Oblivion was released in 2006, and at the time, there really wasn't anything like it. I mean, the closest thing was probably Morrowind, but come on. Can you do this in Morrowind? I don't think so. I mean, that was so impressive that Bethesda made it a huge part of their press conference when they revealed the game. I just gotta tell you something. I mean, maybe not something good, but definitely something. However, as impressive as moving pieces of chain around is, it was not what made this game a masterpiece. For that, we need to look no further than slightly to the left. No, not the walls, just a little bit slighter than that. All right, forget it. What I'm talking about is the people. By the nine divines, you're an ugly one. But then all orcs are ugly. Wow, what a jerk. But I'm not gonna listen because I know I'm beautiful. Let me see your face. No, I'm sorry, Mr. Emperor. I was just joking. No, don't look at me. I'm hideous. Gods give me strength. Right from the start, the NPCs that populated this game were more interesting and unique than ever before. Like this guy. I'd really love the lights at night. Shoo, shoo. The city of love. Got it? Love, light, night. Big. Big, 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 big. Um, right. Like I said, very interesting. Whoa. Oh, you, you scared me. I was off in my happy place, and you just popped in and wrecked the whole thing. Look, you're not helping, guy. Anyway, all these interesting people each felt like they really belonged in the place that they were. And better yet, they actually seemed to live their lives as you might expect. They ate, they slept, they stole forks. It was groundbreaking. No game had ever given a non-player character this much autonomy. And honestly, very few, if any, have matched it since. Even Skyrim did not go this far, as they opted for a more on-rails approach. Which works for a first-time experience, however, it begins to lose its magic after you hear the same conversations every day. Single. Day. Do you get to the cloud district? Oh my god, Nazim, oh, shut up! It's like the thousandth time you've said that! What do you got, like the brain of a goldfish? Jeez. What was I talking about, yeah? And if you bother talking to these NPCs, they'll just run through the same bit of dialogue like some kind of CD player. It's a bit weird if you ask me. However, in Oblivion, you don't have any of these problems because every NPC will do something a little bit different every day. They'll speak to new people and they'll say new things. And if you bother talking to these NPCs, they won't just run through a preset list of dialogue options every time you click on them. Sure, they do still have the normal rumors and city options. However, every single NPC also has a unique greeting that they will only say to you once, which is great for replayability because you will constantly be running into dialogue that you had totally forgotten about. Like this guy, what does he have to say? I don't remember. Yeah. Right, well I guess that wasn't a very good example, uh, but you get the gist. Now, I won't lie to you, this system is certainly nowhere close to perfect and can often lead to problems like NPCs getting stuck in houses and sometimes even getting killed and more famously stupid dialogue, which I for one consider to be a positive rather than a negative. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hi there. Yes. I mean, seriously, can you honestly tell me that Skyrim would not be better off with more of this? I haven't time for fools. Any new books you've been reading? Go away, fool. Oh, sorry to bother you. As amazing as Oblivion's NPCs are, and let's be honest, they are pretty amazing, there is another arguably more important aspect that really takes this game from being good to being the best, and that would be the quests. Sure, there are some great quests in Skyrim, but Oblivion doesn't merely have great quests. It has tons of great quests. I mean, practically every quest is fantastic. Alright, well, maybe not every quest. I mean, there is the one where you have to go beat up a bunch of slaughterfish, and also the one where you look for Nernroot. Oh, and Aid for Bruma. I mean, talk about tedious bull 
manure. But let's be honest, those few bad quests do little to tarnish Oblivion's good name. I mean, you can skip aid for Bruma if you want. Sure, that means the battle won't be very much of an actual battle, and Joffrey will probably get killed, but really, who cares if he dies? The Blades certainly don't. They have nothing to say about Joffrey's death at all. Plus, he was the guy who lost the Amulet of Kings. If anything, he deserves to die. Anyway, what I'm trying to get at is that the vast majority of Oblivion's quests are fantastic, from the one where you kill a bunch of partygoers to that time you slept on a boat and then it was stolen, and even that one where you have to find a painting. Sure, that sounds pretty boring, but in reality, it's a whole lot of fun, especially when you need to start interrogating the peasantry. What were you up to when the painting was stolen? I was with the Countess all evening. Didn't see a thing. I'm on to you. Now, if you didn't notice, all those quests I just listed are side quests. They're not even the main quest. And as a matter of fact, the side quests are probably the best part of the game, which is pretty rare. Because usually side quests are super boring. But not in this case, unless we're talking about Aid for Bruma, because that one sucks. Now, that's not to say the main quest isn't good, because it certainly is. But if you wanted to, you could easily just ignore the main quest altogether and only do side quests. Because why deliver a boring amulet to lazy old Joffrey when you could join a band of thieves and commit the greatest heist that Tamriel has ever seen. Or even commit just a regular heist, because even that's actually pretty exciting. Or you could join the Mage's Guild and get trapped inside a well. I mean, that's pretty cool. Unless you die. But you know, this is all relative. What I'm trying to get at is that this game has some of the most memorable and amazing quests that I've ever seen in a video game. And that's really something because I played at least a couple of video games. So I know what I'm talking about. I think. Now, I may be a fan of Oblivion, but that doesn't mean I can't see its flaws, because I can. I can see everything, except why kids love the taste of Cinnamon Toast Crunch, because for some reason, only kids can see that. They must have ESP or something. However, as for Oblivion, I'm aware it can be a bit of a mess, and by mess, I mean extremely buggy. And I don't just mean the fun-loving bugs either. Well, I mean, there are those, and they can be pretty funny. I mean, what is even happening here? But aside from those bugs, there are also some really awful ones, such as you go through a door and the game crashes or you have fast travel and the game crashes, or you try to enjoy the game and the game crashes. It's mostly the game crashing, which really sucks if you haven't saved in a while. Nothing is more frustrating than defeating a really tough boss only to have the game crash on you moments later. And the last save was right before you fought that boss. I mean, it's enough to make you want to just give up and do another quest, especially when you take into account how bad the combat is in Oblivion. Yes, I am very aware that it is bad. It's weird and floaty, and it takes a million years just to kill anything. I mean, I mean, come on, it's a freaking goblin. It should be dead already. <laughs> Shut up, goblin. No one asked you. What's really unfortunate, though, is there is no decent alternative either. I mean, the swords are dumb, the bows feel like cheap dollar store kids' toys, and even sneaking is pretty useless outside of the Dark Brotherhood quests. And even during the Dark Brotherhood, it kind of sucks. I suppose magic is probably your best bet, but it still isn't all that satisfying. Well, unless something like this happens. Yeah, that can be pretty satisfying. But most of the time, no matter what you choose, you're going to be stuck with an overall underwhelming combat experience. But that's just the thing. Oblivion isn't really all about the combat. It's about the world. Meeting new and strange people and going on exciting and strange quests. Like this one where you travel inside a painting. Wait a second. There's something different about this painting. Isn't that supposed to be a full wall? Holy crap! We're inside the Pixel Empire website, who just so happens to be the sponsor for today's video, by the way. Well, since we're in here, I suppose this is as good a time as any to start telling you all about Pixel Empire. Pixel Empire is a website devoted to geek-related posters and apparel, like this Skyrim t-shirt I'm wearing, or those sweet travel posters hanging on my wall. I like them because I can pretend like I can afford to travel to places. Tatooine's a real place, right? Well, anyway, if any of this stuff looks cool to you, then make sure to click the link in the description to head over to pixelempire.com, and make sure to use coupon code CANTINA to get 10% off your order. And if you like the travel posters like me, you're in more luck because currently Pixel Empire has all of their travel posters on sale for 20% off. Plus, you can use the 10% off coupon code with that as well. I mean, that's like a, a lot of percent. I'm not a math guy. However, if that isn't enough for you either, Pixel Empire is currently doing a gaming poster set giveaway. So if you want to win some sweet posters, make sure to hit the giveaway link in the description as well. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video and, uh... I just gotta figure out how to get out of here. Wait a second. Is this the brush of true paint? I think it is. Hey-ya! Oh man, I was really sure that was gonna work. Ah oh, well.